Welcome to worship in the name of Jesus Christ this morning. You're also welcome here as we hear God's word for us, as we receive God's forgiveness for us through the meal of Holy Communion. Uh, today we will have Holy Communion as a part of our worship service, and we practice open table communion, so you and yours are invited to this meal. Uh, if you are someone in need of gluten-free, it will be here on your left station. Uh, there'll be bread here, uh, and we'll make our way down, uh, back to our seats down the external aisles. There's grape juice in the middle of the tray and wine on our external circles. A uh, few more announcements. Uh, Baby Harper Hawk, this is her right here. She's small, you might not see her. <laughs> so, uh, this is Baby Harper, and she'll join the Lord's family through the sacrament of holy baptism today. So please welcome Harper uh, and her family in baptism. Uh, Thanksgiving Eve is this Wednesday night. We have pie here at 6 p.m., homemade pie that you don't have to make. Uh, and at 6.45, we have a special Thanksgiving Eve worship service. Uh, all young adults and college students are invited especially to be a part of Wednesday night service where they will receive uh, a survival guide for December's finals and for a crazy time in their new professional careers. Uh, and so if you have young people in your life, make sure they are here on Sunday. Uh, we just had our annual budget meeting and the budget for 2023 ministry priorities passed. So thank you so much uh, for those who were able to be a part of it. Uh, it was kind of fun. We had a south campus of those who were still down at TCF Bank Stadium. <laughs> so uh, really neat uh, to have people joining uh, from all around. Uh, and right now I'd like to invite Brianna Grunberg from Habitat for Humanity who's going to share uh, a message. Uh, Brianna is the... Uh, I'll introduce, have her. She's the volunteer and resource coordinator, I think is your title. Yeah, yep. volunteer and family services. Thank you. <laughs> Close. <laughs> yeah, good morning. My name is Brianna, as Pastor Elizabeth said. Um, and um, I wanted to let you all know that we have a volunteer opportunity coming up for uh, members of Dilworth Lutheran Church um, to volunteer in our third and final house of this year. Um, it's located in Little Italy neighborhood of Dilworth. Um, and we're partnering with a single mother and four children um, on this home, and they're super excited to be able to have a safe and um, stable place that they will actually be able to afford on, um, based on their income. And this is our third house that we're building in that neighborhood of Dilworth, and we've been um, so grateful for your church's support um, over the last few years. Um, and yeah, we gr truly can't do what we do um, by serving families in um, Cass and Clay County without the support of um, church congregations, um, individuals, businesses um, that are willing to support us financially and also bring out um, volunteers to be able to help us build our homes. Um, so on Saturday, December 10th, um, we're looking for five to 10 volunteers for um, each half day shift. Um, the task is going to be getting the house cleaned and ready for um, our home dedication that's happening the next week. And hopefully um, soon thereafter, the family will get to move in. Um, and yeah, since we won't be using power tools that day, um, children um, ages probably 13 and older um, can come and help us clean um, the house as well. So it might be a fun um, family event to, to come out. So we'll have a sign-up sheet for those that are interested, and then I'll be in touch with um, further details. So we look forward to seeing some of you soon in the next few weeks. Thank you. Thanks, Brianna. Uh, we're so grateful for Brianna and for Habitat for Humanity here. Uh, our evangelism committee uh, is most deeply connected with them, and you'll see them uh, leading the way on December 10th at that uh, day of working. Uh, next up, we are at 131 statements of intent for our capital campaign have come in, and we have just over $614,000 pledged. So thank you so much. Uh, we'll continue collecting pledges uh, for the next month or so, uh, and we'll be back at our January annual meeting with more information on what's to come. Uh, I invite you to stand as we sing God's praise. <laughs>
continue with our confession and our forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who is eager to forgive and who loves us beyond our days. Amen. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? Find me in my fears, God, and bring me out of the dark. One thing I asked of the Lord, to live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. Teach me your way, O Lord, and lead me on a level path because of my enemies. Find me when I am in conflict, and teach me the way of peace. Wait for the Lord, be strong, and let your heart take courage. God of mercy and forgiveness, we confess that sin still has a hold on us. We have harmed your good creation. We have failed to do justice love kindness, and walk humbly with you. Turn us in a new direction. Show us the path that leads to life. Be our refuge and strength on the journey through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer and friend. Amen. Beloved of God, your sins are forgiven and you are made whole. God points the way to new life in Christ who meets us on the road. Journey now in God's abiding love through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And join me in the prayer of the day. God of deliverance, you promise prosperity and peace to the exiles of Jerusalem. Grant us to prosper not for riches, but for faith, so that our lives may be a blessing to all. We pray these things in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated for special music.
This is Harper, everyone, and we are welcoming her into the Lord's family in baptism. God, who is rich in mercy and love, gives us a new hope in a new birth into a living hope through the sacrament of baptism. By water and the word, God delivers us from sin and death and raises us up to new life in Christ. We are united with all the baptized in one body of Christ, anointed with the gift of the Holy Spirit and joined in God's mission for the life of the world. Who presents Harper Rose? We present Harper Rose. Called by the Holy Spirit and trusting in the grace and love of God, do desire to have her baptized into Christ. If so, respond, we do. As you bring Harper to receive the gift of baptism, you are entrusted with responsibilities to live with her among God's faithful people, to bring her to the word of God and the Holy Supper, to teach her the Lord's Prayer, the Creed, and the Ten Commandments, and to place in her hands the Holy Scriptures, and to nurture her in faith and prayer, so that Harper may learn to trust God, proclaim Christ through word and deed, care for others and the world that God made, and work for justice and peace. And do you promise to help Harper grow in Christian faith and life? If so, respond, we do. And God's people here at Dilworth Lutheran, do you promise to support and pray for Harper in her new life in Christ? If so, respond, we do. We do. Congregation, I invite you to stand as we confess our faith in the Apostles' Creed. I ask you to profess your faith in Christ Jesus, reject sin, and confess the faith of the church. Do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God? If so, respond, I renounce them. Do you renounce the powers of death that rebel against God? If so, respond, I renounce them. Do you renounce the ways of sin that draw you away from God? If so, respond, I renounce them. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who is conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Congregation, please be seated. And Harper Rose, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Harper, child of God, you have been sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked by the cross of Christ forever. Amen. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Let's join together in prayer for this little one. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O God, that through water and the Holy Spirit, you give your daughters and sons new birth cleanse them from sin, and raise them to eternal life. Sustain Harper with the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Amen. And little Harper is joining the Christian family today uh, as a light for the world. And so wherever she goes uh, and wherever she lives through her whole life, uh, she is part of God's family and will shine the light of Christ wherever she goes. Now, and our quilters made this quilt for her as a sign that wherever she goes, uh, that God's love will wrap around her, whether she is in the military in the Philippines or in school in Fargo. Uh, God will be with her. And Laura, do you want to walk her around and introduce her to the church?
think she caught all of your names. <laughs> so that was good. <laughs> and now let's join together in welcoming the newly baptized. And the words will be on the screen. Let's see. Um, yep, oh, one more rack. There you go. Let us welcome the newly baptized. We welcome you into the body of Christ and into the mission we share. Join us in giving thanks and praise to God and bearing God's creative and redeeming word to all the world. Amen. You can go back to your seats. Thank you. First reading today is from Isaiah 36. In the 14th year of King Hezekiah, King Sennacherib of Assyria came up against all the fortified cities of Judah and captured them. The king of Assyria sent the Rabshakeh from Lachish to King Hezekiah at Jerusalem with a great army. He stood by the conduit of the upper pool on the highway to the Fuller's Field. And there came out to him Eliakim, son of Hilkiah, who was in charge of the palace, and Shebna, the secretary, and Joah, son of Asaph, the recorder. Then the Rabshakeh stood and called out in a loud voice in the language of Judah, Hear the words of the great king, the king of Assyria. Thus says the king, Do not let Hezekiah deceive you, for he will not be able to deliver you. Do not let Hezekiah make you rely on the Lord by saying, The Lord will surely deliver us, and this city will not be given into the hand of the king of Assyria. Do not listen to Hezekiah. For thus says the king of Assyria, Make your peace with me, and come out to me. Then every one of you will eat from your own vine and your own fig tree and drink water from your own cistern, until I come and take you away to a land like your own land a land of grain and wine, a land of bread and vineyards. Do not let Hezekiah mislead you by saying, The Lord will save us. Has any of the gods of the nations saved their land out of the hand of the king of Assyria? Where are the gods of Hamath and Arpad? Where are the gods of Sepharvaim? Have they delivered Samaria out of my hand? Who among all of the gods of these countries have saved their countries out of my hand? that the Lord should save Jerusalem out of my hand. Now when King Hezekiah heard it, he tore his clothes, covered himself in sackcloth, and went into the house of the Lord. And King Eliakim, who was in charge of the palace, and Shebna the secretary, and the senior priest covered with sackcloth, to the prophet Isaiah, son of Amos. They said to him, Thus says Hezekiah, this day is a day of distress, of rebuke, and of disgrace. Children have come to birth, and there is no strength to bring them forth. It may be that the Lord your God heard the words of the Rabshakeh, whom his master, the king of Assyria, has sent to mock the living God, and will rebuke the words that the Lord your God has heard. Therefore, lift up your prayer for the remnant that is left. Now when the servants of King Hezekiah came to the prophet Isaiah, Isaiah said to them, Say to your master, Thus says the Lord, Do not be afraid because of the words that you have heard with which the servants of the king of Assyria have reviled me. I will put a spirit in him so that he shall hear a rumor and the king shall return to his own land. I will cause him to fall by the sword in his own land. The word that Isaiah, son of Amos, saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. Now, in the days to come, the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established as the highest of the mountains and shall be raised above the hills. All the nations shall stream to it. Many peoples shall come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord. To the house of the God of Jacob. May he always teach us his ways that we may walk in his paths. 
for out of Zion shall go forth this instruction and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. God shall judge between the nations and shall arbitrate for many peoples. They shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. The word of the Lord. is from Matthew 5 from the Sermon on the Mount. Jesus said to them, You are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hid. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. And please be seated and boys and girls, come on up for the children's message. Close your eyes, and congregation, you're welcome to close your eyes too, and you're going to tell me where you've heard this sound before. Sounds good? Ready? Close your eyes. Okay, ready? Here it comes. Where have you heard this sound before? Jingle bells? Yes, absolutely. You can open your eyes. Where have you heard jingle bells before? Where? In the music room earlier today. Yes. <laughs> yes, that's true. <laughs> have any of you ever had reindeer come to your house? Oh, well then. <laughs> How about Christmas time? Have you ever heard them around Christmas? Yeah. Jingle bells is like one of our fun, classic Christmas sounds. So you can sing jingle bells. You can sing I wish you a Merry Christmas. We have so many good Christmas songs that include jingle bells. Okay, are you ready for the next sound? Okay, close your eyes again. It's loud. Congregation, I'm warning you, it's a little bit of a racket. Ready? Any idea what this could be? Clara, what could it be? A hammer. A hammer. Yeah, you can open your eyes. Um, ugh, I didn't do arm day the last few years, so this is a little hard. But <laughs> um, it is, it's a big old anvil, which is something you might find in a machine shop. Uh, you can find it ugh, all over the place where people are building and fixing things, right? And this, what's this? Yeah, a hammer. Okay, watch your fingers. Yep, and you just use it to bend stuff and to mold it and to build stuff, right? And do you know what? You might hear this in a machine shop, but do you know what sound this also is a sound of? Pardon? It is like a bell, um, and it is actually one of the sounds of Christmas. I know, weird, right? It is a sound of Christmas because in the prophet Isaiah, the very long reading we heard today, God says that when Jesus is born in our world, that God is going to take things like swords that you use in a war to like poke and hurt people and scrape them all up. Um, God is going to take swords and God's going to take a hammer and God's going to shape them into plows. So you use that instead of hurting people and having a war, you use it to plant. Um, and it is a thing that brings life instead of war, instead of death. And God says the same things about a thing called spears, like where you would poke and hurt somebody with a spear. Instead, God's going to make it a tool to help grow apples on an apple tree. That's pretty great, right? And so when you hear the sound of a hammer hitting like that, it's actually also a reminder to us 
that God is going to take this bad stuff in our lives and in our world, like war, and God is going to make something new with it because God is a God of life who gives good things to us, not bad things. And so when you hear this racket of God building something, it's a reminder that God is active in your life and in our world to build something good for you and for our whole world. And that's what Jesus is born for, to bring salvation or saving life to all of us. Pretty amazing, right, boys and girls? Should we pray? All right, congregation, please pray with us. Dear God, Dear God we, love we love you. Please open our ears, please open our ears to, hear to hear how you are building, how you are building in our lives. In our lives. Amen. Amen. Thanks for coming up, boys and girls, and you can head on back to your spots. Grace and peace to you from our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. During 2020, the, you know, everyone's favorite year recently, uh, uh, my mom was receiving chemotherapy. Uh, she has leukemia. And our extended family, maybe like yours, has a wide range of beliefs on masking and COVID and vaccinations. Uh, we have it all in our family. And since our kids are in school and daycare, and both my husband and I work with a lot of people every day, and we're exposed to colds and flus and whatnot, I was worried that I would bring in germs and hurt my mom that first Christmas. And so we celebrated Christmas that year with just our small nuclear family. Uh, and it was hard. Uh, it turns out that Christmas really is better when you're with your family. Um, and we have cousins, and we love it when the kids play with them and all of that. And so instead of family time, I did what was second best. I just bought my kids more stuff. <laughs> so I bought everything that Christmas. Sleds, and Barbie finally got her dream house. <laughs> uh, we had everything. Uh, if there was a jingle bell to clang, uh, I rang it. And we were going to have a Merry Christmas or else, darn it. <laughs> Uh, and it was really fun. We played lots of games. We had frozen church parking lot uh, Christmas Eve. We celebrated the birth of Jesus. We had Lefsa. Uh, we were happy to be together, and we were sad. And it was beautiful, and it was bittersweet, and it was right, and it was also really hard. And as I have thought back, and I've been trying to write down some of my reflections from that weird year, uh, because I think I have amnesia about most of it, <laughs> Uh, but I'm trying to remember bits and pieces of it. And one thing that I have been thinking about a whole lot lately is how I really needed to hear that year that God is still active in our lives. I needed to hear that a baby born in Bethlehem for us and for our salvation, for our dear and our sick and our sometimes really hurting world, I needed to hear that God is persistent in our lives, bringing good news, and that God is still working in our world. And honestly, it was the persistence of this good news that we're not stuck, that we're not alone. That's what got me through that entire <laughs> winter of our discontent. Now, in our Bible story today, we have uni unique insight into our dear and our sick and our sometimes hurting world. We're in the same time frame as last week's Bible story, uh, Pastor Dan's sermon from the prophet Micah. And the context is that the Assyrian army is taking over the entire Middle East. Uh, they are cruel, and their tactics of war are meant to make people scared. Uh, they were they were one of the first and most brutal armies that you can just about imagine. 
Now, Assyria's capital is in modern-day Iraq. It's outside of Mosul, so the same place where some of our Dilworth Lutheran people spent part of the Gulf War. And the Assyrians had already defeated all of northern Israel. They decimated the cities. They had trampled the vineyards. They had burned fields. They had destroyed businesses. There was almost nothing left in the north. They had separated families from families. And so only Judah, this tiny 20-mile piece in southern Israel with Jerusalem in its middle, had yet to be conquered. And then the Rabshaka, so a diplomat from Assyria, he comes to Jerusalem. He stands outside the gates. He throws down the gauntlet. He says, don't trust your king, Hezekiah. Don't trust your God. Surrender. Then go home. Later, we'll move you to Assyria, but come on. Don't be like the people of the north who have lost it all. The Rabshaka looked at the people in Jerusalem and speaking in their own language to further get under their skin. He does all he can to make them scared, to make them afraid. And so how does King Hezekiah respond? He did what I hope all of us do when we feel like we're stuck, when we're scared, when we don't know what to do next. He goes to his deeply faithful friend, the prophet Isaiah. And Isaiah, he tells him the truth. He says it first, do not be afraid. He says, Hezekiah, remember, God is taking care of you. And in life, there's no business as usual, Isaiah says. God is working today. Listen, you can hear God tap, tap, tapping away, creating something new in your life. God is going to beat swords into plowshares and spears into pruning hooks. This is serious business. He continues, the stuff of wars will become tools to grow life. And Hezekiah actually listens. And here's what makes that remarkable. Imagine listening and trusting that you're going to be okay, even when an army is of 185,000 people, soldiers, is surrounding you. But Hezekiah takes him at his word, and he trusts. And then two things happen. The first is that the Assyrian army gets recalled. They actually all head back north. Judah survives. They were not conquered. And second, Isaiah's prophecy changes the way that Hezekiah lives. From then on, Hezekiah tunes his ears to listen for God in a different way. He listens for the beat of God persistently making something new in his life. He listens because we don't always hear a hammer hitting an anvil. But what Isaiah the prophet says, he says God is doing something every day. So listen up, folks. Listen for how God is touching you and working in your life and growing something new in you. Now, Hezekiah knew, and then he learned to listen for the sound of God doing something new. Uh, and in Hezekiah's life, what's interesting, it always made him uncomfortable. It made him, it gave him real discomfort when God was leading him a new way. And it was one of the ways that Hezekiah started to look for God, to recognize God, because we aren't always comfortable when God is leading us to do something new. Now, as Christians, we take the power of sin in our world very seriously. Uh, we believe that there is power in sin and that evil is real. We see the effects of war today in Ukraine. We see the nations continue lifting up sword against nations. And closer to home, here, we see families having real and significant hurt and disagreements. And when we're honest with ourselves, we know the excuses and little lies and the anger that's in us. We know how deeply we can hurt each other. And 
Isaiah knew something else. He knew that the power of God is stronger than all of this. The power of God was stronger than the Assyrian army. God is stronger to whatever sin holds us back. There is nothing that God can't work with and create something new from. In, like in the prophecy, God takes sin, he takes the hurt in our world, and consistently and persistently, God says, even this stuff, I can pound this and make something new. When God is making even our sin new, listen. Listen for the tap, the persistent God working in your life. Pay attention to the vibration of the hammer around you or the feeling in your gut of God leading you. Like God hammering the sword into a plowshare, God takes our sin, God takes our hurt, and God promises to make it new. Now, one way to recognize God is to listen and to feel what is it in your life that might need to be reshaped. What in your life feels like it's bent out of shape, like you're just not standing as God's people? What needs strength that you can't provide? Because when we're weak, God is strong. Now, especially this time of year, today, it's Christ the King Sunday when we trust that our God is Lord and will return to our world and make all things new. We continue to pray for people in war zones, we continue praying to help us all navigate family relationships, to navigate the grief that is a part of the holiday season when you remember those that you've lost. We continue to pray that every relationship can find a real way forward. And the prophet Isaiah reminds us then to listen. Listen for that beat. Listen for the sound of God beating a sword into a plowshare. Listen for God reshaping you. Now, as we move into Advent in just a week and to Christmas, jingle bells are just one sound of our God coming near. Because listen carefully, because from Jerusalem, there's the sound of a hammer. The son of a carpenter is good at building things, and he is drawing near. Our God is drawing near to us. Thanks be to God. Amen. And just a quick note on this. After the ending, we will return and do the chorus.
stand, we continue with our offering. And let us pray. Gracious God, you are our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. We pray that in every challenge we face, your spirit will increase our trust and confidence in your presence and care and help in our lives. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. And God of our peace, we pray for a peaceful end to the war in Ukraine and the millions of people displaced from their homes and communities. Bring them comfort, healing, and hope. We long for the day when we will beat our sword into plowshares and our spears into pruning hooks, when nation will not lift up sword against nation or learn of war anymore. Lord, in your mercy. And together we pray for Andrea, Judy, Carrie, Michelle, Lori, Valerie, Arlen, Eileen, Vern, Gail, Doug, Lorna, Elsie, Kevin, Casey, Anita, Arvilla, Millie, Jan, and Roy. And all these we entrust into your care. Through Christ our Lord we pray. Amen. And at this point we will welcome our new members. At this service we just have Curtis and Darlene. Do you want to come on up? And we'll welcome you officially. opens in your bulletin uh, that you'll see our new members they're all listed uh, three quarters of the way to the back you can just stand you can stand by Dan he's friendly <laughs> perfect uh, Curtis and Darlene are part of this last group of people who are planting themselves here spiritually here at Dilworth Lutheran you'll see uh, short bios of all of the folks who are joining and right now it's in a spirit of togetherness that we accomplish the work of the Lord. Working together in faith, hope, and love, we see to it the worship and work of Christ are done here at Dilworth Lutheran. So as we bless you, as you join our community of faith, we trust that you will be blessing here. A reading from Ephesians 3. For this reason I bow my knees before the Father from whom every family in heaven on earth takes its name. I pray that according to the riches of his glory, he may grant that you may be strengthened in your inner being with power through his spirit, and that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, as you are being rooted and grounded in love. I pray that you may have the power to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth, and to know the love of Christ which surpasses knowledge, so that you may be filled with the fullness of God. People of God here at Dilworth, I ask you, congregation, will you support this brother and sister of ours in one common faith? Will you commit yourselves to their needs and their well-being among us? If so, answer yes with the help of God. 
And friends, on behalf of this congregation, I ask you, will you be diligent in furthering the work of Christ through your own attention to worshiping God and serving God through the life of this congregation? If so, answer yes with the help of God. Yes, with the help of God. Uh, and uh, people of God, this is Curtis and Darlene Christofferson, uh, and it is a joy to have them. Uh, they have a really uh, neat story, and they've been here in Dilworth just a few years. So please uh, introduce them, uh, to introduce yourselves to them. <laughs> And let us pray. God of grace, bring all of us together each week to worship, to give thanks, to hear your holy word, and to share in holy communion. Help us to serve people of every need. Increase in us a sense of the need for peace in all the earth and strengthen this community with the faith that you bring. Amen. Amen. Thank you. And the Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, and after giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The table is set. Come and eat.
Hear the blessing and the benediction. The God of steadfastness and encouragement grants you to live in harmony with one another in accordance with Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. And please stand for our sending song. And come on down front, children. I remember the instruments today.
go in peace and spread the faith. Thanks be to God. Amen.